Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms. So I'm just gonna kind of like free flow today, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I'm getting ready, I, ha I literally have to film this and then go upstairs and take a shower and get ready to go to a viewing today. Um, and I had said on this channel, like a couple days ago, somebody I had worked with 15 years ago, and a lot of people assumed it was a coworker, but it was actually um, a patient that I had had 15 years ago. Um, who is a, a young man still, and um, and I know his family very, very well, and it's very tragic and very sad. And uh, you know, I I was I'm going with a friend of mine that I that I actually did used to work with. She was a coworker of mine, and we both worked with him. And I texted her earlier today, and I said, uh, I hate going these things. I always cry, like I'm always such a mess. And she was like, I know, I do too. And um, you know, I've really learned through my mother's funeral, and my mother was always somebody that like when somebody passed away. I mean, literally. That night, she took a casserole, a loaf of bread, cookies over. And what do you need me to do? Do you need me to clean your house? Do you need me to do this? And, you know, I wish I was more like that. Like, I think that's old school of back who we were, like, in the 50s and the 60s and the 40s. And, you know, I think it's a tradition that has really been lost. And um, one of the things that was really interesting to me was that when my mom passed away, like, that did not happen. Like, and there were, a, like, my, at my aunt at my aunt and uncle's house, like, there were so many people over there, but, like, there weren't casseroles. Or, I mean, I was, like, in my apartment by myself. It was just a really sad time. My ex and I had broken up six months before. You know, like, if I wasn't at my aunt and uncle's house, then, you know, I was, like... <laughs> by myself in my apartment and it was just really really lonely and you know at the time my friend Tanya she had left for Florida we knew that my mom was going to pass away sometime that week but we didn't know when Tanya called me and she said do you want me to come home and I said no you never going to take a vacation because she owns her own business I said you stay I you've been such a good friend to me through all of this because my mom had been sick for a really long time and I had a really close friend of mine with me um, whose mother had uh, suicided the year before, and she kind of like walked me through like the whole process. My aunt and my cousin helped me plan the funeral, and that's a whole funny story I'll have to tell sometime about my aunt talking about her funeral that she had already planned and everything. And uh, my cousin was just so helpful to me through the whole process. And um, you know, I was thinking about that today as I was thinking about this family, and uh, I'm very close with the mother and the sister, and uh, like. I was thinking about the days leading up to my mom's funeral, and it's really weird what happens. Like, you know, I don't know, people ask me all the time, they're like, what do you, what do you suggest as far as grieving? And it's like, I kind of like, I believe that we've come up with this whole funeral process just to like help people be busy that week. And you know, like my mom passed away on a Thursday. Yeah, she passed away on a Thursday, no, she passed away on a Wednesday. And uh, I think it was a Wednesday. And then, like, the next day was when we went and, like, made the arrangements, the funeral home, and all that kind of stuff, right? And then, like, I was just so overwhelmed. I swept that, I slept that day, you know, didn't really do much. And then I remember I called my cousin on Friday, and I was like, um, I don't know what to do with myself. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I don't know what to do. And she was like, well, what would you normally do? And I said, I'd probably go out with my friends, honestly. And she goes, go out with your friends. And I go... I know, but I feel like that's kind of like, I don't know, like I'm betraying my mom in some way, or she goes, Peter, she wouldn't, she's, she wouldn't care and she's not here, go, you know? And I remember I went out with my friends that Friday night and it was like really good for me, you know? It was really good for me to be out and dance and kind of get out of my element. Because then when I returned back to my um, apartment that night, I was like so lonely and I just felt so alone in my, you know, I remember I, I, so like, this is my mom's condo that like, I, it was left to me. And, um, but at the time I was living in an apartment and I remember like that Friday night I went out and then I came home at like two o'clock in the morning and I remember driving back over here and just like sitting here and reading some of her journals and, uh, I just wanted to be close to my mom, you know? And then the next day I got up and, uh, my friends were like around me. I had to pick out a suit uh, for the funeral. My aunt had been like, go to Saks. I want you to look really nice for your mom's funeral. Go and pick out a suit. <laughs> I remember I said to my aunt, I said, I think it was in the spring, which my mom passed away in May. I said, I just kind of want to wear like a white linen shirt and like a pair of like, like blue, like pants, you know, so, like really nice pants. And, uh, my, and my aunt looked at me and she goes, you will wear a suit. It's your mother's funeral. You will wear a tie. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. And my dad called me and he said, you're wearing a suit and a tie, right? And I said, yes, Aunt Kathy already yelled at me about that. And he goes, okay, you're not, no open collared shirt to your mother's funeral. I go, yes, I understand that. And he goes, 
Besides it being inappropriate, your mother would have wanted you in a suit and tie. I go, okay, everybody, get off my ass. I'll wear a suit and tie. Which today, I'm like, wear whatever the fuck you want to wear to your mother's funeral. It's your mother's funeral. You know what I mean? Like, I looked very nice, and I got a great suit out of it, and it was, the whole thing was okay, and I understand it's not appropriate, but I really believe in that moment, you should do what you want to do. If you want to come to your own mother's funeral in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, fuck it. It's your mother's funeral. You do what you want to do. It ain't nobody's business, and I believe that firmly today. Now, out of respect, my mother loved me in, like, khakis and a button-down collar shirt and a tie, so probably a suit and a tie was appropriate. She would have loved me to look that nice. So... You know, I think you have to know what would make your parent happy. Um, my mother probably would have looked at me and said, you're going to wear a tie and you're going to wear a suit. So I knew that, you know, this is not about that. But, you know, then that night, my two friends and I got together and they knew my mother very, very well. One of them is the one whose mother passed away before mine. The other one was a, like a contemporary of my mom's, a friend of hers too. And we sat down and we picked out like all of the songs that we wanted on the CDs that we were going to play at the funeral. And, um, cause my mother's viewing was four hours. It was from four to eight and it's really surreal. Cause tonight this is from four to eight to it's four Oh nine. As I'm filming this, I have to be there at five. And, um, I can remember thinking it's so long, like it's going to be so long. And my friend said to me, she goes, the viewing is the hardest part. Like you, it's just, you have to say hi to all these people and whatever. And, uh, you know, like we made these CDs and then I remember we drove around and we got fountain Cokes and uh, all of us are in sobriety. And uh, we were like, I don't know, each smoked a pack of cigarettes while we were listening to all this old music, you know, like Bob Dylan and Judy Collins and, you know, Barbara Streisand from, you know, The Way We Were soundtrack and that album Once, you know, Falling, I think it's called Again or something like that. And, you know, we listened to all this great music that my mother loved and, you know, Joni Mitchell and <laughs> Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. It was like all of her favorite songs were on there, you know. We drove around forever and it just was such like this really cool night, telling memories about my mom, laughing, telling good stories. And, you know, for me, that was like the paramount moment of the whole week. And I'm so glad that I had those days leading up to it with, you know, stop being at my aunt's house for hours on end and people stopping by and just being, you know, when they had just found out the news and, you know, being part of that funeral process really allows us to relive somebody's life. It's such a, you know, uh, really, it's such a very magical, magical day or week, you know, like it usually takes a couple days. I think for my mom, it was like short and it was like four days or five days. But a lot of people I've known that like they die and then the funeral's like a week later. And, you know, it's such a magical time, even though it's like really sad. And I say that because it's like the last time that you're really going to like focus and think about that person. And I feel so badly for this family today. You know, it's like his mom keeps on posting all these pictures on Facebook and I see him and, you know, and I got to talk to her on the phone for, we talked for like an hour and people forget, you know, time goes on. And, um, I remember at my mom's funeral, her church is two stories and, um, I had a very cool funeral. I had the funeral for my mom that she wanted. And, um, uh, <laughs> we took our casket in on a, one of her favorite hymns and it was carried out to singing in the rain because my mother loved musicals. And um, I'll tell the whole funeral story at some point. But when I stood up because I gave a eulogy at my mother's funeral and I looked up and, and my mother thought nobody cared about her. She thought she didn't have any friends. And when I looked up and the entire place was packed and I mean it was rose out into the, the hallway of people standing and the whole second floor was standing room only. I started crying and I said... I wish my mother knew how many people cared about her. And I don't really cry about that because I think like about my mom, like, I mean, it's been 10 years. I cry thinking, I wish we all knew how much we really impact people on a daily basis, you know, just by a phone call or just by a text message or just by a Facebook comment or a Twitter tweet, you know, anything, you know, just by like the way that we live our lives really impacts other people. And I think that it's something that we really need to think about. I think we really need to think about what do I want my life to speak of? I tweeted out something to the effect of today. Um, well, I can just read it for you, but I was like really thinking about this tonight. And I was like, you know, I was really sad this morning, but like also like appreciative of getting to know this young man and what my life was about and all of that kind of stuff. And um, I tweeted out, I'm a little sad today. I don't like seeing friends in pain. 
But life is about the bitter and the sweet. Be a little nicer today. Stand for something. Dance. Kiss. Love. Life. Is really short. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you later.